All right, where we left off, I was just getting rid of the white on my mouse head layer. And I just used the magic wand with contiguous turned on and it selected all the whites and I hit delete. And what it did is it cut it out really sharply. You can see all the stair stepping. And it left this little halo of white around the soft fur. So how do I get rid of that? Well, I use the magic wand again and I select the empty space with contiguous checked. And then I can go to select and mask under the options for the magic wand. And I'm going to feather it and I'm going to feather it four pixels. I'm just going to type in a four right there and then say, okay. And you can see from the little um, preview mode, if I turn the preview to basically 100%, it will show me the new stuff that's going to be selected. And that's all that white halo, at least most of it. It can't be super smart in how it detects the edge, but it can do a pretty good job. And all I'm doing is playing with feather. I'm not adjusting any other setting. I think I was getting in trouble with that before because I was smoothing it. I was changing the radius and it would give me an uneven selection. But if I just feather, it's just going to radiate out from my selection a few pixels. So then I say, okay. And what I like about feathering, both with the lasso and with the magic wand, is you can hit delete multiple times and it will keep softly erasing from it. So if I hit delete once, it takes away a little bit. Hit it some more, takes away some more until I get to a softness on most of it. Now, is there, are there still little white undercuts? Yes. Am I going to worry about those right now? No. But that did a nice job cutting out the fur in most areas. And then I can go in with my eraser and fine tune it when I'm more sure of what the, the head design is. But I haven't added the lion's mouth yet. I haven't finished the ears. So I don't need to get too ahead of myself. Now I have the bulldog ear. I like kind of the internal part of that. So I'm going to use adjustments. Really going to brighten it up in the highlights and maybe darken the shadows. I'm really just looking at the inside of that ear and I want to give it a lot more color. So I go to color balance. I know we do this a lot. And we're getting used to it and that's about the practice so i'm going to shift it more towards red more towards yellow and then in the shadows i'm going to push it more towards blue but that's going to help us to do this more and more quickly and then in the highlights more towards yellow all of this transforms our subjects and it makes it more controllable as our own I can also transform it with command T and I can warp it, get it out of the place of the eye. Ooh, I kind of like how that changes the shape of the skull a little, but it's probably too extreme for the anatomy. So I have to worry about the overall body's anatomy, not just the head. And then I'm actually not going to use, well, I'll use my lasso. But I'm not using much of this ear. I'm just using the, the inside of it. So I don't need to worry about all that green on the outside edge. And I'll just duplicate it again and delete what's behind it. And now the bat ear. Let's move it behind. So if that's the center of the ear, I want to move this bat to fit in with that proportion. And it might mean warping it. And I have that fur from the bat, which is really helpful to transition. Always good to have textural overlaps.
Then I want to tug this ear over to the side. And if I need to, I can always just lasso around and duplicate one of the ears to separate them onto their own layers. Okay, now, first of all, I can blend the bulldog ear into the bat. And if I need to adjust it some more, I can do that now that I'm just using the inner ear of the, the bulldog, which was largely in shadow in that photo. So now when I play with the adjustments, not that was good. And with warping, I can make it work better with the bat ears. And now I'll use my eraser, soft edge at 100%, and start blending those features in. Once I get rid of that hard seam, then I can start blending at lower opacities. Because I like this little muff of, of hair. So let's go to 63%. Just kind of softly start blending that in. And then 20%. Get the texture of that bat ear to come through, and yet we have the the inner workings of the bulldog ear. Fun with compositing. And if you erase away too much, you can always go back in your history. And decide what's too much and what's too little. That's probably pretty good. Now I got to go to the bat ears and I have to erase out the back side of the head. So I go back to 100% opacity. Maybe make it a little bit smaller so I can be a little bit more targeted. Remember, you can use the space bar. Whoops. It's cut through a lot. Let's see. There we go. I can use the space bar to move around while I'm zoomed in. Oh, wrong layer. And I don't want to accidentally do this, where I erase so that the gray is coming through. Transition between. So you should take some time building your engine, building the head of your creature, because that's going to be the main focal point. I'm making my life a little bit harder than it needs to be because one of the ears is behind the head and one of them is on top. And really, I should just separate those out as different layers, and then it will be much easier. So to do that, this is the internal compositing. I take that bat layer and I cut it and duplicate the ear onto another layer. And then I cut it again, that same layer, 
and I just delete the ear from the other layer. So I have it as a separate attribute that then I can just move behind, which makes it a lot easier than trying to erase it out to the right place. And then to transition, all I need to do is erase away from the head in front, right here. First take away the hard edge, and then lower opacities. Okay, almost finished with the head. Gonna finish with the head this video. More bad ear transitions at lower opacities. Because as I blend these opacities, as long as I have the overlap, it will also help with the color and the general lighting. Though we'll learn some tricks next class with dodging and burning and clone stamp to really help those things. But I still want the structure of that ear there. I get to blend these soft textures into each other, which is best done with a soft brush. Good, let's save that. Now I need the mouth, because remember, I wanted an open mouth as part of my design. And I wanted it with teeth and maybe tusks, so I think I might have to abandon the tusks just for the sake of time. So I'm gonna use this lion. Gonna lasso around the nose, the whiskers, anything I think I can use. Though on the grassy background, that's gonna be a real pain to cut out. Then I hit from the lion layer, Command J, move the duplicate up, erase the smart object. And I can start by just transforming it, Command T, and getting it to be a better size. Can line up that nose. And I can hold down Shift, and I can change the proportions right, in a nice way. I can also, I haven't done this much. I've used Warp a lot, but if I right click within the Transform box, I can also use skew, and skew is a little bit more controlled. It will match the perspective a little bit better and lets you kind of shift things because I want to shift that lower jaw back while keeping that forward jaw forward, <laughs> like so. And then what gives you a few more options in skew is distort, where I should be able to shorten the bottom a little bit as well. Again, it's like rolling out cookie dough and trying to get a, a particular shape. Now I can do a lot with image adjustments, first levels, but the biggest thing is gonna be color balance here to get rid of that overall yellow light. I can brighten it just a bit, but if I brighten it too much, I'm gonna lose pixel information. And you can see that in the histogram. Then go to color balance, really going to take away yellows. Especially in the highlights, you see how much of a difference that makes in making it blend in with my creature's lighting. And then in the shadows, I can actually add some red and magenta, just a little bit. Okay. And then next class, I'll show you with the dodge tool how we can clean these teeth, make them a lot, lot nicer looking. I would say 80% of all tiger photos have Photoshopped clean teeth. It's a lot safer than cleaning them in real life. 